Hello, and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to punch, chop, and kick your way through the greatest action movies. This week, though, is a little different. We're going to pop in here and there into your feeds with something different. You've already heard our first episode of John Explains, which is fantastic for Mythica. And I know I know, in our back pocket we got another one of those because John's already been chomping at the bit. It's like, I got another one to talk about. I want to explain this other film franchise. <laughs> Something about zombies and a shopping mall. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to explain the Dead Rising franchise, the two movies they did for that based on the video game. I've been watching a lot of zombie movies lately with all of the uh, time. And it has nothing uh, to do with um, living in Seattle during this pandemic, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So, but yes, I've been watching a lot of zombie movies and I wanted to give some credit to uh to one based on a video game that actually didn't take themselves too seriously and came away with a pretty good movie. So, I think we have more John explains as John cuz John's willing to wade into those deep waters. He's willing to go way mm-hmm. out there past, you know, when you go to the lake and there's like a line that floats in the water. It's just like, don't go past here. It's unsafe to swim. John's willing to put on the life jacket and just go underneath <laughs> that rope and just go out <laughs> into the lake. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. If you've ever seen a movie title and wondered, I wonder who, who the heck pays for that. Well, John's seen it. <laughs> I have. <laughs> So this time we wanted to do something a little different, which is a You Should Watch It episode. And this is actually going to be a full series of You Should Watch It, which are movies that we watch that aren't. We're not going to go to the full Go With The Heat deep dive on it. Full music, full guest stars, you know, the whole shebang. Instead, it's about, hey, we, we checked it out. We actually think you should check it out if you're into the same type of movies that we are. And this time we have our first You Should Watch It movie, which we mentioned in a previous episode just by chance, this one came up, and we we heard it and could not pass on it, and that's Red Surf. It originally came out on April 21st, 1990, although it's listed as 1989, so they must have delayed it at some point in time, like they were going to release it, and then they didn't, or it was like I wonder why a they German would release, that. and then they <laughs> released it in the uh-huh. U.S. or something. That's strange. <laughs> I don't know why they would do that with this movie. <laughs> Almost like the, cause whoever was, you know, uh, supposed to produce it back <laughs> out and then get someone else to spend money to put it on the VHS. Or... <laughs> By the way, this movie only grossed $13,000, so whoever backed it financially probably didn't see a penny. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm wondering how they got that 13000 <laughs> Those people want their money back. <laughs> you know where that 13000 went? It went to kiss. <laughs> exactly. This is why it doesn't make any sense to me that for streaming services and these types of movies, why they don't just, hey, just pay us a few bucks to have it on Netflix and stuff like that. Just put it out there because these movies are really, really hard to find. Now, we're able to find this one on Tubi, mm-hmm. but there's some other ones that I really, really want to watch. But you can't get them. You em. can't find them anywhere. Like our next mm-hmm. movie that's coming up after this one is going to be Deadly Bet, and you can't find that anywhere. Now, we happen to find it on <coughs> YouTube, and we were able to watch it there, but it's I don't understand. I, the same thing with Ghost Dog. John talked about Ghost Dog. Sorry. I got all excited about it. You can't find it anywhere. Uh-huh. Maybe because it's titled Ghost Dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I think I think I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and buy Ghost Dog. So, but that's it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have to bid against someone on eBay for it. <laughs> I did see some for Deadly Bet on eBay, where it was one of those four movies in one sets, and I can't remember what the other movies were. Like Deadly Bet was the biggest name that was. Okay, on the well sets. then, um, no, that's not worth the twenty five cents. <laughs> Now, Red Surf, let's just set the scene here for Red Surf, because oh. uh, you should watch it. We're not going to do the full dive here. So let's just set the scene really fast in Red Surf. It is a gang, of a motorcycle gang, right, who is also doing drug running for Mexican cartels, and they use jet skis. Now, these are some freaking amazing jet yeah, skis. Yeah, I mean, these are badass like, jet skis. They are, not a regular one. They are jets on mm-hmm. skis. <laughs> like, they're literally jets on they skis. They look like motorcycles without wheels. They look like motorcycles with boats. Bottoms. They're like uh, snowmobiles. They got yeah, the actual yeah. skis on them. And they're red, too. <laughs> Hence the mm-hmm. name, Red Surf. 
it's got George Clooney in it, which is what hooked me in the very beginning. Like, we got to watch it if it's got a young George Clooney in it, who's a super crackhead, has a pregnant girlfriend who wants to move to Portland because she know moving to Portland solves all your crack problems. <laughs> That's, that should explain a lot about this biker gang, too. Like, like these people, they want to move to Portland. Um, <laughs> I know. By choice? <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> From, so, from like L.A., right? They live like in L.A. or something. Or whatever. Yeah. They live by the beach in Los Angeles somewhere. And you want to move to Portland. Hmm. <laughs> but yeah, definitely George Clooney is what turned us on to want to see it. And I did not realize. So I've always thought George Clooney's acting career started right around the time he showed up on Roseanne. But he's actually been in more stuff for then. So he played a young man carrying a barrel. <laughs> on a episode of a TV series called Centennial in 1978. That was his first acting Damn, career. 1978. So exactly, exactly. All the way back in 78, he was carrying barrels on TV. <laughs> Like that, that was like in the in the credits, like man, young man carrying barrel. <laughs> he must have been really good at carrying that barrel. <laughs> so they followed that with. And they're off, and then a movie called Grizzly 2 Revenge in 1983, <laughs> which I kind of want to see that, because uh, Grizzly 2, I mean, come on, it's a sequel, it's about revenge and bears. <laughs> <laughs> then he did some TV guest spots until he got a role on Attack of the Killer Tomatoes in 1988, and that would have oh, been right, right around the time yep. Roseanne. It was the very next thing he would do. There was something after Roseanne that I, I guess maybe I forgot about. Or two somethings, I should say. So Clooney was in a TV show called Bodies of Evidence. He was in 16 episodes of that where he played a detective. And then after that got canceled, he was in a show called Sisters for 19 episodes. I don't remember either of those shows. Especially playing a detective. I can't picture Clooney as a detective. <laughs> he was also, I think, on the uh, like the facts of life, too. Wait, okay, so hmm. we got to go back to Grizzly 2 The yeah, Revenge. Yeah, I just looked it up. Grizzly 2 The Revenge yes. is the sequel to the 1976 Jaws ripoff, Grizzly. Oh, my God. That it's not only a Jaws ripoff, but there's by the time it came out, there was a, this, <laughs> yes. there's a little bit of a gap. So there's two names for it. It's also known as Grizzly 2 The Predator. But it's got George Clooney and Charlie Sheen is the head <laughs> person in it. <laughs> oh, wow. A young Charlie <clears throat> Sheen. We got to see this Laura movie. Laura Dern's in it, too. Oh, my God. We, okay, we got to see this movie. Hold on. Just oh, wow. watch. Grizzly 2 <laughs> Revenge, 1983. See? See? We, we're doing one just because it came up in an episode. Now we're going to do another one because it came up in an episode. And him and, Thank it you, looks Clooney. like him and, him and George... Him and, George Clooney and Laura Dern have sex, too, because they're naked in this picture. <laughs> so there's huh. that. By the way, his girlfriend in this movie is Dee Dee Pfeiffer, and she's Michelle Pfeiffer's younger sister. Oh, wow. Um, I guess she was on Sybil for a while. Clooney in this movie, which is a thread with a lot of these uh, karate movies that we've been watching, is that the main character is really, really, really unlikable. <laughs> So like, yeah, he's really, really unlikable. Attila is kind of likable. He's kind. Attila's best, great. Yeah, he's great. I he's love nice. Attila. He's he makes, sweet. Yeah, but not George Clooney. He's an ass. <laughs> Sorry, what, what is, is his name? In there? What is his name? Remar. Yeah, Remar. Are you? Is there any redeeming qualities about Remar? Because I'd like to know them. <laughs> Even if by the end, when he supposedly has kind of redeemed him, he do, he's gonna he try did, and. Though. No, he never does. And Attila, it's sweet. all along, yeah. he's the ducky of yes. Red Oh Surf. my god, he is. <laughs> yeah, he's like his best friend. He's trying yes. to protect him. He's trying to protect her because. The girlfriend's pregnant, and she tells him, like, I'm going to go to Portland and leave you. And Attila's like, well, you got to take care of her. You can't let her go. And George Clooney's like, no, I have to wear these vests and, uh, and a sweater around my waist and be an ass. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got to ride this cool jet ski that my friend, the doctor, built. <laughs> <laughs> oh. one of the things too is like they're supposed to be a biker gang and they're really doing living the drug lifestyle i will give them some credit think about the time period in which this movie was made so we're talking you know late 80s early uh 89 90 so 
Like this is this is back. I mean, even a little bit before the like two live crew and parental advisory stuff. So like a lot of in cinema and in entertainment stuff, drugs was just they just hinted at it, you know, or it was exaggerated. There's some pretty hardcore drug stuff like scenes going on in this. I mean, for the time period, I couldn't believe there's a scene after he finds out that she's pregnant. And Remar says, okay, fine. I'm going to clean up my act. I'm going to do this one more. No, sorry, he, he doesn't tell her, yeah, he's going to do that one more. Screen. It's like, I'm going to clean up my act. I'm going to get better. I'm going to take care of you. And then she leaves the room to go, like, go make him breakfast. No, she makes like a giant, sorry, she makes like a giant ice cream sundae on a huge oh, platter. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like, what the hell's with that platter? <laughs> and she goes in and he's hit the crack pipe. Yeah, it's like, well, <laughs> yeah, that lasted a while. Yeah, and like, that's what I'm saying. In 1990, like there wasn't a whole lot of TV or movies where you're, they were showing freebasing. Like I, I, when I saw that, I was like, like, "Oh damn, this is some hardcore shit." I think the only movies I've seen where someone actually freebasing in a movie where they actually show it is this movie and Chris Rock. As <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, what's his name? Oh, um, um, was that what was that? It. New Jack City or it's yeah. New Jack City Pookie? Pookie, no, yeah. Pookie. Damn it. Okay, yeah. never mind. I should have brought that up. Now I'm sad for Pookie. Pookie. He took advantage of him. Oh, poor Pookie. <laughs> he also got burned. If you haven't watched Christmas. New Jack City, go watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's another one you should go watch. You should go watch New Jack City. Yes. I, yes. Yeah. The biggest complaint no, I have about. I, I, think, I, I think from like time period for me was like, I was thinking like, man, it wasn't until Requiem of a Dream in the 2000s where like, like it was really independent, but like they really went a hardcore dive into like hardcore drug culture and so for the 1990s this is much more reserved than that but like for the for 89 like this is this is pretty extreme for the time period i know melissa has lots of complaints about this movie my biggest complaint about this movie that i'm gonna get to like the stuff that i really liked but the biggest point i have it is that i don't think there was any actual mexicans in this movie it's <laughs> no it was like <laughs> i think they brown skinned hey, some people i'm also <laughs> my name is Har- harold and i'm jewish i'm a jewish man but i'm gonna pretend like i'm mexican <laughs> <laughs> I have okay, serious yeah, we complaints gotta about that out. point. <laughs> okay. The fact that Doc is played by Gene Simmons, who yeah. is uh, obviously the lead singer of Kiss, and uh, <laughs> involved with everything Kiss related. He um, actually had a smaller role in this than I was hoping. Well, I mean, after we saw him in his famous... <laughs> <Da-da>! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was hoping he was going to have a bigger role, but no. <laughs> But what I do like about this movie is I do like how Remar's character arc goes that he never really learns his lesson that just the way his lifestyle is. She was never going to be able to move him to Portland and no. that everything was going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And I do like, mm-hmm. and I know I'm not like this, but I do like that, the, at, and spoiler, 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 that Attila, the Attila thing does work out in the end. Yeah, because I, I wanted that to work out. I was like, he's never going to... Even if Remar did suddenly have a change of heart and they went to Portland, it was never going to work out. Attila is the better one. He's going to be there and actually like show up for doctor visits and remember things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Attila's in a couple of the scenes where they had some of uh, the... I was a little bit more impressed by the grown-up talk, like where they're having that <laughs> scene where the scene where he's sitting there talking to him and the scene where he takes her to the doctor and yeah. he's talking to her. There was some adult themes here you know it wasn't all because there's some goofiness it, the movie starts with them playing a really goofy prank where they basically drive one dude's car off a cliff into a, i'm sorry they drive one car into this the other guy's car knocks his car off a cliff and they leave the other guy's car hanging and then they just walk away laughing for the oh. longest time but in the, the movie i thought the actor playing true blue which is he's dressed as the woman in that scene and then he eventually gets arrested and is the weak link just in say all it, he's this. a jackass i thought he was a baldwin for like most of the movie well we all know <laughs> we all know this the baldwin that could have played it him. that's why <laughs> steven would have been the perfect uh-huh. baldwin to take that spot but he had better hair so <laughs> that like shaved like lines in the side of your head thing that told you right there he was the weak link <laughs> <laughs> he was gonna get arrested <laughs> by the way guys just one last thing with the gene simmons he was in a couple other movies in the 80s uh, and apparently in one of them, he battled Tom Selleck. And I think it was what Runaway in 84. <laughs> We're both like... <laughs> <laughs> what is that one? <laughs> I think it was I think it was Runaway in 1984. Yeah, he battles Tom Selleck. Is, isn't Runaway that cop one, though? 
Yeah, that's that futuristic one with He's, Tom Selleck as Gene him Simmons in, in that movie. That's him? Oh, my God. We've seen that. I love that movie. <laughs> It's like, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. So Tom Selleck is like in charge of, he's a policeman in the future and he's in charge of the robots, right? Oh. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we, we watched they it. They have all these little robots, but then they turn on them. Tom Selleck is really hot gotcha. in that, by the way. <laughs> young, it's a young Tom Selleck with his big ass mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is him. He is the bad guy in it. Oh, my God. How did we huh. forget that? I just completely forgot wow. it because he doesn't look like himself. He looks like he's got like shorter hair in it or something. God, what is the well, name of that that's... other movie? Oh, damn it. Um, oh, Never Too Young to Die. Yeah, there we go. He mm-hmm. is the... Now, listen. Okay, that's the... <laughs> go <Listen>. back. <laughs> in Never Too Young to Die, he is a great character with horrific... Like, is that 90s, 80s? 80s. 80s. 80s stereotypes. Yeah, it would not be okay now. No. We should say that right away. Like, it's definitely not PC. It's the way his char- what they wrote his character as. No. He, no. But you but... take the the motorcycles with a horses on them. Yeah. And Gene Simmons' character Plus, and John yeah. Stamos being like his Jim Cotta style karate. <laughs> yeah, because he's because he's a gymnast in the movie. <laughs> and then so yeah, he's a gymnast in the movie, and then he finds out he doesn't know his dad was a spy, like a CIA spy or whatever. No, just an agent. And then his dad dies, and he has to like r- basically avenge him. The, but the best part, I think, the best part of the movie is that Vanity's in it. Oh yeah, yeah, for she's right. good yeah. in it. Mm-hmm. So coming soon to a you should watch it. Never too young to die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the bad guys in Red Surf. All right. So I specifically want to talk about one bad guy, Naga. Naga is played by Vincent Klein, who also played Fender Tremola in Cyborg. He played a mm. Thai thug in Kickboxer 2, Carl Cuba in Blood Match. And War Child in Point Blank, Wild One in Double Dragon. Are you guys seeing a theme here? <laughs> Except he's not a bad guy in this movie, though. Oh, he's not. I no, he he's was. their I friend. He the... He's their friend at the oh. like when they do that last scene where they're like all out in jet skis. He's out there because Attila like helps him and pushes him off and like like gets him off into the water and everything. Okay. Yeah, so he's actually I'll their friend. Honest, I forgot what character he was. I just wanted yeah, because he's not very much way. in the movie. He like it's like the last scene where they're like yeah. him and the long haired Asian guy at mm. the end. Oh, that's right. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And I told him like that's okay. the guy from Cyborg, and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, he's rumored to be in the. Re- he's rumored to be reprising his role in Cyborg Nemesis. Oh, really? a new Cyborg movie? Well, I bet they won't let. There's all kinds of stuff happening in this. But they one. probably won't let JCVD in that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no rubber knife. Everyone's gonna keep both their eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this movie, Red Surf, has like it's a typical story arc of a of a man who his he's supposed to be growing up. He has a girlfriend. He's just living that young party life. He just can't get himself out of it. He just gets in so deep he can't he can't get out. It's a pretty typical story. Arc that happens in a lot of movies, especially for that time period. Uh, what I really liked about it is that it was where it took a turn, where it deviated, was that he wasn't just some mastermind dealer. He was a middleman, actually. He got drugs from someone else and dealt them to another person. And the jet ski thing was kind of cool, and it's, it's, especially being a jet, jet ski style I've never seen before. I didn't even know that they existed. <laughs> Um, but I also liked that he never actually learned his lesson. And that's the thing for like the 80s. And in the 90s, movies start to pivot where they, the main character doesn't always learn their lesson by the end of it. So you can see like in the early 90s when this came out, that was the thing that was starting to happen. But I did like that he doesn't actually learn his lesson. He just is. No, yeah, it's just what he is. He just mm-hmm. keeps on going and doing the same thing. And he never learned his lesson. It was a very bad after school special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. It gave us uh, Doug Savant, who plays Attila. You know, we got to, if it wasn't for that, he probably wouldn't have got his role on Desperate Housewives in 175 and also, episodes later. Melrose Place. That's where I know him from. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mel- Melrose Place, too. Yeah. Uh, so, with the movie, because we've talked a lot about other stuff other than the actual movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I think there's a reason for that. Let's talk about the movie. No, I'm um, what I didn't see coming with this movie in the end, where it looks like everyone's just good to go, they're ready to leave. <laughs> and 
George Clooney is like, or Remar is like, actually, you know what? Let's just do it one more time. Just so yeah. we can make sure we kill all the right characters. Yeah, let's do it one more time because of all that whole, uh, they think they sent their friend off. He's supposed to be gone. True Blue is supposed to be gone, but True Blue is a moron. And he can't <laughs> He can't stay away. I'm telling you, this is an after school special. He can't stay away from the drugs because some strange man goes up to him and says, hey, I can get you, the, I can score some drugs for you. He's like, okay, next mm-hmm. thing you know, his head's in a bag in the ocean. <laughs> That's the thing with the movie is that like his friend who gets busted and kind of rats it out, he kind of ruins the relationship between him and the guy he's buying the drugs from. As the movie went on, I actually thought it was a really good movie. And actually, I thought the end scene when they felt like they had to go and kill everybody and get revenge I thought that was a little excessive because I thought like, okay, you know, they dropped their buddy off and then like he goes off and goes to try and score drugs again and gets caught and gets killed. And I thought like, oh, that's going to be sad and that's going to be the end of it. Dies anyway. But then we had to have the big 80s jet ski fight. I was enjoying the movie almost more until it kind of got off the rails at the end there. But I mean, who doesn't like a good jet ski chase? Desky battle off with an explosion. With an explosion, and then he's burnt to a crisp, <laughs> but still alive. So then Attila pulls him out of the water, and he's very crunchy, and he makes some. Noise. <laughs> Sorry, he makes some crispy noises as he like oh, he's like, oh my god, you're dying. And he's like, eh, crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. <laughs> so it's, the only thing you can do when your friend's been burnt to a crisp is send him off into the ocean. You can't bury him. Mm-hmm. No, no, like a regular. Oh yeah, person. Viking <laughs> funeral. Yeah. Also, I imagine because they put him on that surfboard yeah. and stuff, and they put sent him out of the ocean. I imagine they did that in like Long Beach. And then <laughs> later in the news, it like yeah. uh, uh, shows San up Diego, on Diego, yeah, San like, Diego news on Coronado Island today. Oh, body was found attached to a surfboard. Yeah, all burned up. So you can't tell. <laughs> Yeah, and then oh, so then yeah. The, yeah, that's the smart idea that Attila comes up with. They're going to go take care of business. They're going to get revenge, and then Doc's like, "Hey, if you get shot, just lay there, and I'll find you." <laughs> well, the good news is he had plenty of people to get because everybody dies except for him and Attila. <laughs> so, and that's the end of the biker gang and the drugs yes. because they're all dead. <laughs> and then, yes. of course, you can't end the movie without the main villain and his. His special ability, which is those wolves. Yeah, he's got. He saying, say, he's got to fall into the wolf pit. Yeah. So, which is another little tweak in the movie that. that I loved. I loved the wolf. Okay, pit. I did like the wolf yeah. pit, but I think it would have been better if he just kept the doors closed. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you got to have? No, I love that everyone <laughs> kept falling in the wolf pit. That was awesome. Because <laughs> I've seen a ton of movies where people get shot. How often do you get a movie where people get eaten by wolves? I wish I got to see a little bit more of the. <laughs> the what was going on in the wolf pit so but i get it you know ratings it's trying to get that pg rating you know and the wolves were like god we have to eat another one of these people can we just have some freaking chicken or something <laughs> why do they keep sending these people down to us i don't want to eat this and then they get then you get the happy ending he gets to go to portland with her and take care of her baby that they're never going to mm. make it, but that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, the I, trick is that you sell drugs in Portland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. I, All right, I everyone. Feel like, I feel like at times I enjoyed the serious parts of this movie more than the action-y goofiness. Because this movie definitely has heart. But then I still... But that's not saying like I didn't enjoy the goofiness and the action scenes, the wolf pit and the jet skis. And it's tough. All right, everyone. Let's go around one time. And for our theme here, which is you should watch it, let's talk about why we're recommending to other people why they should watch it. Melissa, I'm going to start with you. Why should someone else watch this movie? Because they have a lot of time to waste. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like it's one of those movies you can put on and you don't have to pay attention because you really don't give a crap about George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> Or any of those people in that movie, for that matter. If you don't have any emotional attachment to anybody, you're good. You should watch that one. Because he never learns his lesson and he gets burned. (laughs) To a crisp. And there's wolves. (laughs) John, why do you recommend that the people watch this movie? It's a grittier version of Point Break without, without the bank robbery. I did enjoy the serious part. I did enjoy this, this movie. I did enjoy, I enjoyed the, the drug culture part of it i enjoyed attila i liked attila a lot i'm glad he got to portland i thought it was fun i thought it was fun it was and it was better than i thought i i think i 
I think I liked it more as the movie went on. I'm going to agree with why you should watch it. It's just cheesy enough that it's it's kind, it's kind of a fun thing to watch, but also serious enough that you don't feel like you're watching just like a, a Roger Corman movie. So I mm-hmm. recommend that you check it out. I definitely think that you should check it out and you should give this one a watch, especially because it's free on Tubi right now, T-U-B-I. You can go to Tubi right now and you, you can watch this movie for free. Um, and if you run an ad blocker, you get no ads. Um, and, uh, I think you should just check this movie out because it's young Clooney. There's some tweaks to the standard drug surfer movie that ends up becoming a con- consistent thing in the 90s uh, where there's a lot of storylines in that. And I think that the point break relationship is apt in that, that it's, they have a lot of similarities in it. And I also think there's a lot of things that are in common with this movie as with Deadly Bet, which will be our next movie that comes into your feeds as far as the character goes and how the story arc goes and how they can't get out of uh, the lifestyle that they had chosen. So I I liked it. I liked that it got really serious. I liked that the action stuff. I liked them being on jet skis and having an epic battle with AK-47s and a mounted gun on the back of a boat <laughs> at the end of the movie. Uh-huh. I liked that George Cooney ended up like a burnt marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think you should check uh, it out. You know, and honestly, and honestly, I think it's going to be better than the uh, young Brad Pitt one where he's the cross country kid that we're eventually <laughs> going to watch. I- I'd much rather watch this one. We are all going to be much more excited to watch Grizzly 2, The Revenge. <laughs> or Predator. Yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> Well, that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this shorter run version of You Should Watch It. We would love to hear from you. Email us, goldwiththeheat at gmail.com. Check out the website, goldwiththeheat.com. And while we have your attention here, I want to make a quick plug for the show. Uh, They have a new album out called, and the band is called The Territorials. They didn't pay us to do this. I haven't talked to them about anything. I just want you to go check it out. They're they're good friends of mine. They're good friends of the show. Uh, If you're into 80s and 90s movies and action movies you're gonna like the territorial say they fit that genre of music that kind of rock so you should check it out they're on spotify they're on youtube you can go find them the territorials and uh, you should check them out you should check out our website go to heat.com you can find us on twitter and facebook and instagram and we'd love to hear from you about other movies that we should check out we named a bunch in this episode that we are gonna go check out immediately (laughs) after getting (laughs) off of here so we'd love to hear more. And if you like this kind of episode, email us, goldtheheat at gmail.com and let us know what you think about this style and if we should do more like this and what movies we should do. So that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pal.